How's it going? And welcome to the Music Production Podcast, the show about all things making music. My name is Brian Funk. I'm your host. I'm a musician, Ableton certified trainer. I teach the Ableton Live sampling class at Berkeley Online. And I have a website, brianfunk.com, with lots of tutorials and Ableton Live packs and sounds you can use in your own music production. Right now, you're hearing a pack called Frozen Grains by Elephant. This is an Ableton Live pack with 60 presets that were all made from analog sources that were run through granular effects to get these really cool, lush sounds that are really suitable for any kind of music. It's a really cool pack that Elephant is offering at his site. It's E-L-P-H-N-T dot I-O. He's selling it for $30. And he's also very kindly offering the pack to any member of my music production club during the month of February. So if you're a member of the club or join the club before the month is out, February 2020, you'll get this pack along with a whole bunch of other really cool downloads that you can use in your music. And once you're a member, you'll receive a steady stream of really cool downloads and sounds for your own music production. So you can check that out at brianfunk.com mpc. So one of the big themes of the podcast during the month of February has been Finnish February. So we're really building off of what we did in January, which was January 2020, in which we were making little jams every single day, or at least as best we could. And now Finish February is our chance to take those ideas and release something. This could be a full album. This could be an EP of a few songs, or it could be even just a single. But we want to try to get some stuff done and put it out on the major streaming services. Now is the easiest time ever to get your music heard by the widest audience possible. It's really an incredible time. I mean, we've never had this capability before. So we should really take advantage of it. And that's what Finish February is all about. I'm currently working on a collection of ambient, bedtime, meditation type songs that I did with my OP1 into Ableton Live. And uh, I should have that all done by the end of the week. So it's pretty exciting. And also the time crunch is real. Um, so I'm working on that. I've decided that I'm recording the whole thing to my Tascam 388 8-track reel-to-reel and then bringing that all back into Ableton Live. I already did one pass, but I found uh, the bass was a little bit too intense, so I'm going to actually redo that, remix it, basically. I'm going to send the individual tracks to the tape machine and then bring all of those individual tracks back into Ableton Live and remix. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. I know it will take at least uh, a good hour of tape transfer time because i got to record it in real time and then play it back and record it back into live in real time. And that's about a good hour. Um, but I'm excited to do it. It's a fun experiment. It's something I haven't really tried to do yet with my tape machine. That is put individual tracks on it from the computer and then bring them back in and mix from there. So I think that if nothing else, even if the album is a complete failure, <laughs> uh, it will be a good exercise. And um, it's not a complete failure because I'm just happy to get it out. And I really don't have any expectations for it except to enjoy it myself and maybe have some people listen to it and get some enjoyment out of it too. And that's about it. And that's really, I think, a good way to go about making music is because you can't control the results so much. You can really only control the work you put into it. Um, of course, you can control how much you promote it and all that stuff, but um, that's another story. Um, for today's episode, I wanted to talk about staying organized and being efficient because I think this has really helped me move forward. It's been something that I've worked on a lot over the past, I'd say, six months to a year. And I wanted to just share some ideas, including what I think is one of the most influential books I've read in a long time. So... To get things started, I want to just give a shout out to workflowy.com. Workflowy.com. It's workflow with a Y at the end.com. I've mentioned this before in the podcast, and I was recommended to this site by Ashan Kataru, who's been on the podcast before. I'll leave show notes so you can check out his episodes. Um, this is just a super awesome web based app. It's a, it's a list app, basically. So you can easily create lists, you can fold them, you can create like, it's, it's like bullet points and you can just have a whole bunch of little lists to help you stay organized, to keep your ideas together. And I use this thing every single day and it's been an amazing help. So I would check out Workflowy for sure. And uh, if you're not using a calendar, 
I would definitely recommend that too, whether it's Google Calendar or iCalendar or something like that. Um, just something to keep track of your events, your dates, your meetings, your deadlines. I don't even know how I would exist without the calendar app. It's super important to me. So the book I wanted to talk about is called Getting Things Done by David Allen. And this book has really changed my life. It's made me less stressed, more organized, and much more productive. And I, you know, I read a lot of books about a lot of different topics, and one of the big topics is productivity, creativity. And this book has been one of the biggest ones I've read in a long time, Getting Things Done by David Allen. And what makes this so effective is the way it has you think about um, things in your life and the way your mind works. One of the key points he makes in the book, and the rest of the book kind of is built off of this, is that our minds are really good at coming up with ideas, but really bad at holding on to them. If you think about your mind and how it works, or if I think about how my mind works anyway, is there, if I have ideas, they're kind of all like dancing around in my head, and I'm basically juggling to try to remember them all. And eventually I'm going to forget things. And I get a lot of stress from that. I'm trying to remember what I have to do when I go out, when I run an errand, or when I'm trying to do podcasts, or, or whatever it is, make music. It's very hard to remember everything all at once. So my old method would be to just keep lists. But lists still aren't really that good, and getting things done really helps refine that process and give you new ways of thinking about the work you're trying to do. And it works for all aspects of your life. I apply it to pretty much everything. Um, to break it down real quick, I'm, I mean, there's really nothing better than listening to the book or reading the book. I listened to the book, and I also bought the workbook, which helped me through it. Um, but maybe if you want a, a crash course too, uh, I first heard about this book through the Tim Ferriss show podcast with, uh, episode 384 that David Allen himself was on. And he just said things that really resonated with me and got me into his whole way of thinking. So let me break this down for you quick, give you just some ideas to think about that might help you with your organization and your music. And maybe it'll encourage you to check out the book. I think it's really well worth it. it like I said, it's helped me a lot. It's really reduced stress a lot because I'm not worrying about if I'm going to remember my ideas or get everything done because I have this sort of trusted system. I can rely on it. Now, one of the uh, biggest things, and I've practiced this for a long time, is the two-minute rule. And this idea is if something will take you less than two minutes, you're better off just doing it in the moment rather than storing it somewhere or letting it pile up. Just get it done. Now, this leads to a place where I've always run into big problems is when something new comes into my life, whether it's an idea, whether it's a chore I have to do or anything, a project I want to work on. I never really had a good place to put all that stuff except maybe a list. And my lists weren't that effective because they were all over the place. The idea in getting things done is that you have this one funnel that everything comes into and then you categorize it immediately. You don't keep looking at it and then putting it back in your pile of things to do because then it just becomes this gigantic pile. So once you look at something, you categorize it. And there are a couple ways you can categorize it. If it's something you can do in one step, you make that a next action. And I put this in workflow, I have next actions. And you would categorize your next actions by the place you're at and maybe the effort required. So this would mean that if I'm at home, these are things I can do at home. Then there might be next actions that I can only do at the computer. And those go in my computer next action file. And maybe things I can do at work and those stay there. And this way, when I'm at a certain location and ready to do work, I just look under, say, my computer next action file, and there's all the things I can do when I'm at a computer. Same thing if I'm at home. If I'm at home and I want to do something, I've got all my things listed under home. The next thing would be projects. A lot of your next actions actually come from projects. Projects are basically anything that you want to do that require more than one step to accomplish. Um, projects might be like working on an album or cleaning out the garage or some bigger thing that takes more than one little step to do. We have a reference folder, and this is where we keep ideas or documents or things that we want to come back to later. And I really use this a lot for ideas. 
So I put down like song ideas in here. I put down titles to songs, maybe lyrics or snippets of lyrics. I put down techniques I want to try. I put down philosophies I want to work on within my music. I might put down like a gear list of things I need to bring when I go somewhere to perform. It's a reference list that I can just refer to and find the information I need when I need it. We all probably have things that we want to get to one day or maybe try out or test out or do some sort of project that maybe we're not ready to work on now, but maybe one day we want to do. And that would go inside what he calls a someday maybe folder. And this you can put in like album ideas or I put like my live pack ideas. I put down potential guests for the podcast. One thing that's been really helpful is I put down gear or software I want to buy someday maybe. This has been a really helpful way for me to stave off some of that gear lust because I can put things in the someday maybe list and forget about it and then in the future I go back and review my lists and I might see something in there and I say, nah, I don't really need that anymore. Or I do need that. I'm going to buy it. It's a nice way to create a little bit of a buffer between like the impulse to want to get something and then the actual purchase. Because sometimes we buy things on impulse. I mean, this is why all supermarkets have like candy bars and little snacks right at the cash register because you buy them like, you know, in the last second. Um, we can avoid that with expensive gear purchases by using something like our someday maybe list for our gear. The final category would be called waiting for. And that's where you put anything that is requiring someone else. So if you are waiting for somebody to get back to you on, say, like a mix or a mastering project, you can put it in there. Um, this system has helped me tremendously in my email. And I have always been the person that had dozens and dozens of emails in my inbox and I would always mark them as unread. So if I haven't gotten to an email or I'm not ready to reply or, or process it, I would just mark it as unread. And soon enough, I'd have 50, 100 of these emails that are in my inbox unread. And it's a source of stress. And a lot of times what I wind up doing is I look at them and I mark them unread. And then another day later, I look at it again. I mark it unread. And I spend all of this time reevaluating things and not doing anything with it. And it takes up all of this time. It creates all this stress. And if you probably add up all that time that I spent opening and putting it away again, I probably could have just done it. So what I do when I get an email is I categorize it immediately. If it's something I can reply to real fast in two minutes, I'll just reply to it. And that's most emails, to be honest with you. If it's something that's going to take a little more work, it goes in my next actions folder. And there... I can keep everything that I need to look at. So the next time I go into my email and I'm ready to do a little work, I go into next actions and I pick it and I do the action. I also have a folder for my emails called reference and that is just anything I need to keep on there for future reference. It might be uh, a trip that I'm going on with all the emails for that. It might be like my purchasing for my business so that I can keep track of my taxes. It all just goes in this reference folder and each and inside the reference folder are different categories. Sometimes there's a someday maybe thing and I might put in like uh, maybe there's an activity I want to do that I got an email for or maybe there's some gear I saw that I want to maybe check out. I put that in there. And then when I send out an email that I need a reply on and I'm waiting for somebody, that goes in waiting for it's, a, it's so amazing to have that cleared up and, and um, much simpler and dealt with. My inbox is currently at zero. There's no new emails in there. There's things I got to get to, but that's in the next actions folder. And when I'm ready to actually do some work, I can go in my next actions folder. If I need to just make sure there's no emergencies, I can check my email. If there's nothing in there, then I can just move on. This has saved me a lot of trouble because I was always the person that would start off an email with, sorry, it took so long to get back to you. And it would be like three months. I had emails that were years old and I finally cleared that up thanks to this getting things done method. So um, it's kind of hard for me to explain this whole book in a podcast this short. It's not what I'm trying to do. I'm really just trying to um, encourage you to check out the book, honestly. It's just a heartfelt recommendation because it's really helped me a lot. It's helped me just be organized and it's helped me get things done and it's taken so much stress off my shoulders because I feel confident that the things that I need to do are going to get done because they are in the place they need to be when I need to have them. 
it's a it's a tremendous relief. Uh, I've been much more productive because of it. Now, I want to talk a little bit about some more practical things too. Like that, I guess, is a philosophical thing. But some of the practical things that have been helping me a lot and I think can be helpful to you within like your music production. Um, I've spent a long time trying to figure out how to organize all my project files, all my Ableton Live projects. And a lot of times, I don't know what to name them. You've probably had this experience where you're working on something and it's untitled and you got to save it and you don't know what to call it. I've often not saved things because I didn't know what to call it. And then you wind up with all these folders of songs called untitled and you don't even know what's what. So something I've done is I have a folder called Ableton and that's where all my Ableton projects go. And inside there, I just do it by date. I do it by year. So right now I'm in 2020. And then I do month and I have a January one and I have a February one so far. And anything I do in January goes in the January folder. Anything I did in February goes in the February. And I can go back to 2019 and I have it for all the months of that year. And everything's categorized nicely. Now, I like to export my projects as I'm working on them just to hear them, just to get a sense of where they are. So when I do that, I create the song and I will often just have the date as the title of the song. But when I put it into my iTunes so I can get it on my phone to hear it later, I always make the album title January 2020, February 2020, December 2019, because it helps me just stay organized. I find chronologically is a much easier way for me to keep track of what I'm working on. And then I can always go back and reference my Ableton projects by the songs that are on my phone. It just keeps everything in sync very nicely. Um, so that's really the best way I've found so far. I'd be curious if anyone has a better way of organizing your project files. Because in the past, my, my Ableton folder where I kept my project files was just building up with all of these songs. And I didn't, you know, even if I titled them, like it got hard to tell what was what and things that were done like six years ago mixed with things that I did yesterday. And it's quite confusing. A big breakthrough for me was creating a Google Doc that I call Audio in the Basement, because that's where my studio is. This is in my basement. And it's just like a chart, really, that tells me what's plugged into all of my different interfaces, what MIDI is plugged into what USB hub. Um, I'm going to share a PDF of that in the show notes that you can download just to see what I've done but I can't tell you how much time this has saved me. I've got a patch bay. It's a 24 channel patch bay and it connects between a Claret 8 Pre-X by Focusrite, which has eight inputs. And then I also have two Behringer 8 at inputs that gives me 16 more tracks. And I've got basically everything plugged into these at all times. So I've got microphones on my drums, on my guitar amp, I've got synthesizers plugged in, and very quickly you can lose track of what's what. Once you start getting over like eight tracks for me, <laughs> I lose track of everything. So I've got this document that I keep that just tells me what's in it. It's on Google Drive. I usually print it out and just leave it on my desk so that I can look at it real quick and remember where things are if I ever need to switch wires out or something. It's nice to have it on Google Docs because you can just update it anywhere you are. Usually, I guess I'm here when I'm updating it, but you can always update it and then just print it out again. It's super easy. It's a real breakthrough in my organization. It saves me a lot of time lying on my back underneath tables and desks, pulling on wires, trying to see where they all connect. Um, that's not fun making music that way. To kind of um, go along with that, inside Ableton Live, when you open your preferences and you go into your audio interface, you can select the inputs and outputs and you can name them now in Live 10. So naming your inputs and outputs is extremely helpful because then when you create a new track and you open, say, your input for an audio track, you can just select by the name of the thing it's connected to. So I have, for instance, like track three is guitar mic, track four is bass mic, track seven and eight are my drum overheads. And I don't have to remember that so much. I can just see it inside alive. And that saves me a lot of time. And I highly recommend you take a few minutes and set that up. Um, another new addition in Live 10 was Ableton's collections. 
and we can use that to make the tools you need available easy to find. And I also use it to limit choices. So I've got my seven categories all set up. I've got one called hardware. And hardware is just any device that's connected by hardware. So it's like a lot of synthesizers, it's effects, it's my guitar amp, for instance. So I have like a track set up where I can just drag it into live and it's ready to go. It's got all of the settings and all of the effects I might want. So when I need to set up drums, I have a project with all of the mics already set up that I can just drag from my browser and boom, I've got everything set up for my drums. It's got the effects I like to use because I've kind of tweaked them a little bit, done some EQ settings, some compression so that my drums sound halfway decent right away. And that saves you a lot of time in, um, you know, just getting ready, like setting up drum mics can be a, you know, an all day project. Um, so I, I have a hardware one. I have one called utility and sequencers and those, any sort of like, um, MIDI sequencer effects go in here and any kind of, um, utility things. I have like a DSer in here. I have, um, certain compressor settings. I've got like noise reduction plugins, anything that's more utility. The next category I have is called FX, and those are just any kind of audio effects that I like. The next one I have is called synths, and it's just synth presets I like. Then I have drums, and it's just drum presets I like. Now I like doing FX, synth, and drums because this takes me out of going inside my huge browser with all kinds of effects and presets and plugins, and it just narrows it down. So when I find something I like, I add it, say I find a drum kit I like, I add it to my drums folder in my collections. And it just narrows my choices, it gets me to work faster. I've got one for any kind of video effects, which I haven't been using a lot lately, but it's there, anything video related. And then I've got one called Try Me. And Try Me is just any like new thing I get that I wanna try one day. So I use that when, uh, I'm looking to experiment and I don't have any particular ideas. I'll go in the Try Me folder. So use the collections. It really, it's been a game changer for me. It really helps a lot. When you're working on your projects, name things. Take the extra two seconds to name your tracks. There's nothing worse than when a file starts getting too big and you don't know what's coming out of what track. So take a second, name it. There's a keyboard shortcut in Ableton Live. Command R or Control R if you're on Windows. And that'll rename pretty much anything in live, Command R. Just do that to name your tracks and just type in a name quick. I like to also color code things so I get a visual understanding of what I'm looking at. And that's easy enough to do by right clicking any of your tracks and you can choose your colors. I've been getting mo more and more into just using markers for the different sections of my songs to indicate when things happen, intro, Maybe the bass comes in, the drums come in, the chorus, the verses. It's very helpful for when you're trying to navigate around your song or listen to different sections, or if you even want to loop things, you just can see where you need to loop real fast. Now, it might not sound like a lot, but if it saves you a few seconds here and there every time you have to do it, that stuff adds up. And it's also just, it, you don't have to get into like the mental process of trying to figure out where things are because that mental process, that analytical thinking will get you out of your creative thinking. So if you have things like this set up, you don't have to like start scratching your head and figuring out what's going on. Putting similar tracks into groups is really important. I find it's a lot easier to adjust my drums if it's all in one group and I can move one fader instead of all of the faders. This way I can get a nice balance in my drums and just move the groups around. It's so much easier. You can do that with all kinds of things, guitars, synths, vocals, whatever. Put them in groups and then just move them around that way. Much easier. When I name presets, I like to give some sort of initial that indicates it's something I made. So these days, all of my presets have BF in the front for my name, Brian Funk. And that just lets me see when I look at my presets inside Alive, I know which ones I made. And if I ever want to search through only my presets, I can do a Command F, which is a search function in Live's browser, and just write BF, and then everything I've made shows up. Really handy, and they're just it's just obvious, and it keeps track of the stuff you've made. And 
one more thing I just want to say that I just don't see people doing enough of, it's such a great feature, is saving templates. And I kind of touched on this a second ago when I was talking about my drums. You can take any number of tracks from a project file, like for instance, say my four tracks that I'm recording drums on, or eight tracks, whatever, however many mics I have set up. I only have four. I can take those four tracks, highlight them all, select them all, and just drag them into my browser, and Live creates an Ableton Live set. And that set I can name acoustic drums, and then anytime I need drums, I just drag it in. I like to do this with like the vocoder. Sometimes setting up the vocoder takes a few minutes. So I just have some presets, uh, some templates that I've made that I just drag into the browser when I like a sound of the vocoder. And then I can just drag it back in. All of the effects are saved. All of the settings, it's all there, ready to go the next time you need to do it. It saves you that time. It keeps you organized. I think all of this stuff is really important in actually getting projects done, and it's helped me tremendously. If you watched any of my January videos, you may have seen me do some of this, and you probably noticed that I got better at it as I went because I was doing it every day too. So I started to realize when I was doing something over and over again and maybe saved a template or named a preset or put it in my collections or something so that I wouldn't get stuck doing that every single time. And as I was going back through my projects for January, it was so nice that I named everything because 30, well, I did 25 in 31 days. To have like project number 17 named properly saved me a ton of time. I, I, as soon as I opened it, I knew what I was gonna hear, which was a big help. Can't stress it enough. Being organized is so helpful. Um, and I would like to just remind you of my recommendations on workflowy and getting things done. I, I really do think getting things done was one of the most important books I read last year because it's something that I applied that changed the way I think a little bit and has made me less stressed and more organized and I know where things are. I'm not looking for things as much. That's the worst thing when you can't find stuff you need something now and you don't know where it is. I don't have that happen as much anymore. Drastically, drastically different. So I highly recommend Getting Things Done by David Allen. Like I said, if you want to head to the show notes of this podcast, I'll put the episode I first got introduced to David Allen by on the Tim Ferriss show. He does a nice job explaining it, but getting the book. And I, I even like the workbook that he also sells. I found that really helpful. I listened to the audiobook and then I bought the workbook and changed my life. So that's it for today. Um, we have just about a week left in February, unbelievably. So if you are on the Finnish February uh, bandwagon here, um, it's time to get going. It's time to make things happen. It's not too late though. There's, what, it's six more days in the month? That's still a lot of time. If you can put in just a little bit of time each day, I think you'll find yourself getting quite a lot done. So hang in there, get it done, do your best, and even if you're a day or two late, that's fine too. we get something out in March, I guess. But um, see if you can get it done this month and just picture yourself at the end feeling that sense of satisfaction when you can go on your favorite music streaming app and download and listen to your own music. <laughs> and you can tell people to find you on Spotify. It's, it's a good feeling and uh, I'm excited to be able to say that in the next couple days. Thanks so much for listening. If you find any of this helpful, it'd be awesome if you could leave a review on your podcast provider. That helps get the show out, I think, and makes it more popular and gets more people into it. And I guess that's something we want, right? So I would love it if you could take the time to do that. Um, we, uh, we here, me, appreciate it very much. So thanks so much, guys, and have a great day.